The Prince George's County Memorial Library system will gradually be opening in the coming months. Here's an insight on what to expect. Hi, I'm Sonia Shravastra with the City of Bowie, and today I'm being joined by Nicholas Brown, and he's with the Prince George's County Memorial Library System. Welcome to you, Nick. Thanks, Sonia. Appreciate the opportunity to be on with you. So tell us a little bit about the library system's plan for reopening. I know that they are an independent entity here. So what are your plans? So the library has been uh, carefully watching what the county's plan for reopening is. Um, and we work very closely with the county health department and all of the county agencies. Um, we have a four phased uh, reopening plan. Um, the first phase is really exciting because it's gonna have curbside service. And that is an opportunity for folks to come and start checking out physical materials again from the library, from the safety of their vehicle or from outside of the building. Um, so we're continuing to kind of put, enforce the safeguards that are necessary um, as COVID progresses and hopefully stays low in the community. Folks will have the opportunity to book their appointment in advance. It is a by appointment only. So you can pick up your reserves. Um, you can also start returning books to the book drops as of July 8th. And then curbside service itself will start on Tuesday, July 21st. Library system, like so many across the country, is waiving late fees. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so during COVID, we were already waiving fees. Um, but for many months now, we've been developing a plan of going fine-free. And as of July 1st, we are now proud to be a fine-free library. The elimination of overdue fines enables us to uh, clear outstanding account balances for a lot of people in the county, which will then enable them to resume accessing our online resources, checking out materials again. Uh, it's a really significant opportunity for folks to reconnect with the library who might not have been able to because of those existing overdue fines on their accounts. Right. And let's talk about those online resources. I know that uh, this is really a time that um, a lot of folks want to brush up on certain skills and uh, we are not able to go to a physical class, but you do have a lot of things going on online. Can you talk about that? We do. Um, so we already before COVID had a huge amount of online content. Um, but with this opportunity, we've been able to uh, accelerate enhancing our online offerings. Um, so we'll get into virtual programs in a second, but just focusing on what we call the online library. We have over 85 online educational platforms, and those range from uh, free access to the Washington Post online, the New York Times online, popular magazines ranging from People in Espanol to Essence to Real Simple. Um, we also have uh, Mango Languages, where folks of any language ability can learn a, a new language. Um, I think there are over 70 languages that you can learn in there. Um, we also have live on-demand person-to-person tutoring for, for students, and it is 100% free. This is something that is huge. Um, there is a big tutoring industry in this country, as I think many know, um, but the, your public library offers this to you for free, and it's available in English and Spanish. Um, parents can go on and book an appointment, uh, and those tutors will help your students on any academic subject, help with test prep as well. Um, and that is called BrainFuse Help Now, which is one of these 85 resources. Uh, we also have um, databases where folks can do more academic research, for example, or learn about historical figures. So Nick, I know um, having small children that the, the story time is something that the kids really look forward to on the Facebook page. And, and that's another way that people can really engage is that you have these live uh, Facebook lives and that offer a lot of things for young ones. Yes. Uh, so we have over 30 virtual programs a week that the library produces. Many of those are programs for children, ranging from uh, babies up through high school. Uh, we have daily read-alouds uh, on weekdays at 10 o'clock. We're changing the schedule starting in July a bit. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 are English. Tuesdays at 10 are Spanish only. Thursdays are bilingual English-Spanish. And then Saturdays at 10 are American Sign Language. In phase two, there's going to be building capacities of one person per 500 square feet of public services spaces and folks can come in for up to 30 minutes into the branch if you need to check things out or want to browse the limited browsing selection. And then if you would like to use computer access, um, you can do an appointment of up to 60 minutes during phase two. And then in phase three, we increase access to the branches and remove some of those limitations and then phase four will be more of a return to the, um, the normal that was pre-COVID, but with potentially some existing and physical distancing measures required. All materials that are returned during this phase reopening plan will be quarantined for 72 hours to ensure that anything 
that might be on the materials is disinfected. Um, and then uh, after the quarantine period ends, those materials get checked back in and staff will be wearing PPE. During phase one, customers are already also required to wear um, face coverings when they come in their vehicles or by foot. Um, staff will continue to have protective equipment into phase two, three, and four. And we've actually also installed some protective equipment within the branches for when folks are let in there. So plexiglass shields around the information desks like you might see in the grocery store, um, mm -hmm. additional protective measures on all of the shared technology. So we are focused on safety as number one. You have a summer reading program. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, um, every year we have a program called Summer at Your Library, and this year is the first time it's online only, and then also the first time that we're partnering with the Washington Nationals, which of course are the 2019 World Series champions. Uh, the program enables folks of all ages, from kids to grandparents, to uh, log reading activities every day, uh, log if you've attended a virtual program, and log if you've uh, uh, accessed our online library. You can earn badges, collect points, and then win some awesome free prizes. All of the information that um, uh, Nick just mentioned is available on their website, and they also have a great Facebook page that you all can check out that you see the screen, uh, the link on your screen right now. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, and, uh, and, and you know we hope to talk to you again. Thank you, Sonia.